No charged batteries left. I wish I could charge in the field. Here are our batteries and hardware all unpacked. We'll check the voltages. 3.28, 3.28, 3.28, 3 3.27. Doesn't appear we have any dead cells. For my field charging solution, I chose to make a 12 volt battery pack. I chose lithium iron phosphate batteries as they are a little more robust and a little safer than their LiPo counterparts. They are a little heavier for their capacity, uh, but weight is not a concern since they won't be in a quad. All the batteries have a blue dot on the bottom indicating the negative terminal. The individual cells will be wired into series. The cells have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts and when in series they will produce 12.8 volts. Laying that out, We'll turn those two upside down, put our bus bars on, and before we add the nuts we'll add all our wiring. I'm using 12 gauge wire and an XT60 for the battery lead. I'm not using a BMS, so I'm wiring in a 4S uh, balanced charging lead. Now for assembly. Taking care to make sure we have all the wires in the right position. Now we'll check our voltages. 13.1, which is right. And we'll make sure we have the uh, cell voltages right. 3.2, 6.6, 9.9, and 13.1. And that's right as well. Now let's do final assembly on the battery. We'll plug it into the charger, make sure everything's okay. Everything looks okay. Voltages are reading correct. We'll change the chemistry to charge. and it's charging as it should. Here's a size comparison. We have my drone battery and we have the field charging solution battery. This is 6.1 watt hours. This is 256 watt hours. So this battery should give me quite a few charges in the field. To protect my new battery pack, I'm gonna use a voltage cutoff board. This board will disconnect my load when the battery voltage gets too low. My new battery pack is good to voltages down to 10 volts. To give a bit of safety margin, I've set the cutoff at 10.5. The second function is when it comes back on. So one volt, that is one volt higher than the cutoff. So with a cutoff of 10.5, this will only turn on if the voltage is higher than 11.5. And here we have my field charging solution. Our new battery pack, the voltage cutoff to protect the new battery pack, my LiPo charger, as well as a USB charger for everything else. Why didn't I use a BMS? The battery cutoff point isn't adjustable on a BMS, 
and I have balanced chargers already, so I didn't see the need to add the extra complication to my battery pack. What about a portable power solution? My new battery pack has a capacity of 256 watt hours. That's the same as an EcoFlow River 2 or a Jackery 240. The battery pack is cheaper than either of those solutions. It has less overhead when thinking about the extra circuitry in a portable power solution and it was much more affordable. I do give up a bit of flexibility and ease of use as they are consumer products designed with ease and flexibility in mind. If I needed 110 volts, I do have a 12 volt inverter that I could plug into this system. Let's give this one final test before we pack it up. And we're charging. With a second lead, I can now also plug in my USB charger, should it be needed. This charger I selected does support quick charge and has USB A and C. We do have to be careful with some of our settings when charging now. It's currently set to LiPo, which is for the batteries I use in my quad. When we're charging our new battery pack, I do have to switch to lithium iron. This has a lower top voltage, as you can see, 3.65 volts as, as opposed to 4.2. We should also be careful of the current. This is set to a half amp, which is typically what I charge my quad batteries at. We can use a much higher current for our new battery pack. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. If you've made your own field charging solutions, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Now let's go flying.